This conference will now be recorded. So welcome to our MS support group tonight. My name is Kim. Um, I am from, Des I live in Des Moines, Iowa. I have relapsing remitting and I was diagnosed in 2006, 2000. Oh my goodness. I'm having problems tonight. It takes me a second here. 2012. There we go. Subtract 10 years. And oh, my husband sent me the note because <laughs> Um, on my computer, that's hilarious. Um, and I'm currently on Ocrevus, and I actually had my Ocrevus uh, dose yesterday. So go ahead, John. Hi. Yourself. I'm John. I'm from Michigan. Uh, I was diagnosed in 2016, and I'm currently on Zaposia. If you have Instagram and you're scrolling it, you might see my face. Because I'm like an outreach guy for them or something. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Nice. I'm famous. Did you need time tonight? Not specifically, but I feel like with a small group, we're gonna all going to be able to talk about what we need to, and that's well, fine. We'll see who, who, who straggles in later, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for coming, John. Frank, you're up. Hey, I'm Frank Austin. I'm from Plainville, Kansas. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I was diagnosed with MS in 1997, so it's been up 25 years, and uh, I'm on nothing. I'm, I'm I'm up to secondary progressive, and I just charge on. You so, are on sunshine. I'm on sunshine. There you go. And did you need time tonight, Frank? I do not need any time tonight. I may throw something out there at some point. Sounds good. All right, Mike, go ahead and introduce yourself. And uh, hi, I'm Mike, and uh, I'm in Denver, Colorado. I uh, have relapsing remitting MS, and I am currently on Tecfidera. Um, and I might need a little bit of time tonight. I've got a provider switch going on. I was wondering, I had some questions for everybody about that. Okay, we will get to that mic. Thank you. Jen, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, hi, I'm Jennifer Digman. I was diagnosed with MS in 97. I live in Michigan. It's secondary progressive MS, and I'm taking Rituxan, and I don't need time. Okay. Christy, hello. Go ahead and introduce hi. yourself. I am Christy. I live in Brighton, Colorado. Um, let's see here. I was diagnosed in 2003. I have, I have active secondary progressive. I am currently on Ocrevus and I don't need any time tonight. Just going to listen. Okay. Excellent. Well, welcome. Carbon, thanks for coming back. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Carbon from Canada. Nice to see you guys. I've missed okay. you. We've missed I, you. I honestly, the last one, I something happened and I all of a sudden at seven, I went, ah, I missed it again. Damn it. Anyway, I had my um, knee surgery in June, so I've been um, recovering. So I would like a little bit of time. Anyway, I'm Excellent. Carmen. I have primary progressive MS. I was diagnosed in 2014 and I just went off work last year and three months ago had a total knee replacement, which was way fun. Which province do you, are you in, Carmen? British I'm, Columbia. Oh, the Florida, one I want to visit. British okay. Okay. I, I have another friend, MS, or she lives, uh, not Edmonton. What's the other one? Calgary. Calgary. And we mm -hmm. were talking about doing a trip out to BC. So maybe we'll come visit you. Oh, good. Yes. Please let me know. Okay. And Amina. Welcome back, Amina. Introduce yourself. Hi, guys. Um, <clears throat> my name is Amina Grant. Um, I was diagnosed in 2010. Um, I begin the process of, you know, doctors and stuff. And I did want a couple of moments to talk about that. I'm kind of like really getting the groove of things and I want to share and maybe ask a couple of questions. Sounds great. Awesome. Yeah. Not everyone made it tonight. 
let's start off with Mike and his what he wanted to talk about. Or did he freeze up? Oh no. I think he's frozen. Okay. Um oh, I have a can you hear me? Yes. yes. All right, can you hear me now? Yeah. Hello? Yes. We can hear you. Okay, there's a little bit of a delay. I'm not sure what's going on, but um, I'll go ahead and I'll just explain my situation. So I've had the same neurologist and the same PA for about 10 years, uh, so the same care team. Um, and last year, my neurologist retired, and I um, and I, I had my follow-up appointment uh, scheduled with my PA in May, so that was fine, and I kind of avoided finding another doctor in the practice um, because I could. <laughs> And so I went and saw my PA, and then um, about a um, couple months ago, I found out that my PA has left the practice now, too, and they just went ahead and assigned me another doctor in the practice, which is fine, but it has been so long since I've had to deal with a new provider that I'm not sure like how that goes and like I was just wondering I thought I could ask the group like are there any questions I should be asking should I just let him lead or what how does that work as far as starting that new relationship because it's been so long with me and really my primary medical relationship has really been with my neurologist over the years and I mean, my primary care I go to for other stuff, but it's not really anything that's like super important. Fortunately, I haven't had any other other health issues, so that's. I was just looking for some feedback. So I'm feeling like a lot of anxiety about it, and I kind of have avoided it for as long as I could. And now it's kind of like, okay, I'm going to see this new guy on the 26th, and I don't know anything <laughs> i would say honestly just be confident going in with like a list of what you've been through like a handwritten list i gave that to my neurologist first day i met her i'm like you're my third here's the sheet that you'll want to know about all my symptoms that might not be in the chart okay um, i i usually tend to lead doctor's appointments you know, where I'm just kind of going through and checking in all the things, but that might not be like your style. That's just how I do it. Well, yeah, like actually, just... usually my wife leads them. <laughs> well, and like Fair. I was going to say, Mike, I just started with the new neurologist. Um, after my neurologist kind of hit the wall on how much further he could help me. Um, and I basically did the same thing. I had a list of things that I was going through, list of my medications. Um, and she basically took all that information on and there should be like a, a an initial visit. So your first visit should be longer than your normal visit so that they can go over everything with you and ask you questions as well. Um, so I, I don't know how involved um, your new physician is with uh, multiple sclerosis. But I was fortunate enough to find one in Denver that that's all she does. She specializes in, in MS. So she knew exactly what to ask me if, you know, because we all have the memory loss um, of things that, yeah, we need to talk about it, but you forget to even put that on your list. 
but she's been mm -hmm. really good with uh, asking those questions. So, Christy, but yeah, so just, just go in yeah. with what you need and your medications that you're on and everything and kind of let him, after you go over everything, let him kind of drive the meeting. And then you can take over with driving because I'm sure you'll remember stuff that you may not think it's very important, but then you can go into it further with them. And also yeah. remember, you're not um, stuck to this doctor at all. You know, after like the first two meetings, you're like, nope, F this S, I'm out. You know, I feel like there might be other providers, even within the same, um, like office building or, or whatnot. Yeah, well, and it is, it's an MS specific practice and it's the same practice. It's just a different doctor and the mm -hmm. appointments labeled as a transfer of care appointment. And I think it's scheduled for like an hour and a half. So it's going to be a long appointment. So I'll have time, which is good. So, do you have questions for him, Mike? I mean, is there anything that you want from this doctor? Um, I don't know. I've been uh, I've been on Tech Federa now since I want to say February, and it's been kind of rough. Like the symptom, the side effects have gotten better. But it's, it's, and it's tolerable, I guess. But before that, I was on Rituxan, but because of COVID, I made the medication switch. Well, what I did is I, I, I went off of Rituxan, went on Tecfidera, got vaccinated, then went back on Rituxan, and then found out that COVID was still raging. So then I went back on Tech Federa was kind of the timeline for that because I I was very concerned about how profoundly rituxin affects the immune system and I'm sure anybody who's on Ocrevus and rituxin knows about that so I just um, yeah so but I'm trying to kind of I want to talk to him for sure about that and weighing some of my other options maybe. Yeah. I hope it's a good meaning that you have, you know, and maybe that's a good question. If, you know, if the new medicine's not treating you as well or, you know, how realistic is it to just continue or should you, you know, talk about that. Maybe that would be something. I really liked yeah. what you just have said, Jen and or Jennifer. Do you go by Jen or Jennifer? I go by both. Just okay. not Jenny. Okay. That's, that's right. like eight-year-old me with pimples and crooked teeth. Gotcha. Okay, Jen. <laughs> and also John, just saying, you know, like, what my what immediately comes to my mind is that you kind of have an opportunity to set the stage a little bit with your doctor. Um, sometimes people, and I say this as a nurse and seeing lots of different interactions with doctors, sometimes people kind of defer to the power of the doctor and don't take control. And as a person living with MS, you are the expert. And I just want to encourage you to, to really remember that. But also, you have an opportunity to kind of set the stage, maybe, if you have an amiable kind of doctor. So, I mean, feel them out. But also, you have the freedom to explore different options. But good luck. I also yeah. wanted to ask, Mike, are you feeling, with where the pandemic is now, are you feeling comfortable going back and getting your tux in again? Or is that still off the table for you? I am having a really hard time with it because I'm very worried about it because it seems like we just, the cases never seem to go down, but they're not really going up. And, you know, being vaccinated and boosted, uh, you know, chances of hospitalization are less. But then again, 
you know, but so I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about it, and it's probably something that I need to like actually decide. That'd be a great thing to discuss with him. And on, on now that you know we have data in the last two and a half years, how he feels about you know his feelings on an experience of people on rituxin and getting COVID or getting sick would be maybe a good question to ask him. And you know. Yeah with their comfort levels and what they've seen. So, because mm -hmm. we obviously know more about it than we did back in 2020. Yeah. Three than last year. Yeah, and yeah. So, so much has, has changed as far as people's uh, doctor's knowledge of it. Yeah. And I'd also recommend to you, Mike, is that obviously you haven't been seen since May, so just fill them in on how it's been since May to current. The mm -hmm. good thing about you staying in the practice is they have all your records, so you're not just starting from square uh, one, just your brain. They have a nice yeah. record of you, but then um, you fill in some of the gaps and then uh, what you've been doing since you saw the PA last. Well, I appreciate all the information. That's good because I hadn't really thought much about making a list, but that would probably be a really good idea. Did you have any other questions on that? Or does anyone else want to ask anything before we introduce the, the, the new people that have come in? And I'll go on to Carmen's questions. Just good luck, Mike. Jim, I, I yes. missed my issue. What what is the issue with Mike? Oh, he's going to see a, a new doctor, a new neurologist, because his retired and the PA that was also working with him has also left the practice. So he's staying in the same practice, but seeing a new neurologist at the end of the month. So wanted some ideas on how to approach that. And go oh, ahead and please. introduce yourself, Michael, while you're on there, since you came in later. Uh, Mike, Mike Pettypool. I live in Arizona. Um, had MS for 25 years. Uh, I'm Copaxone. Now I'm off copactone. My MS has progressed to secondary progressive, and uh, I feel fine today. Um, I'm going to say to Mike that sometimes uh, good comes out of it. I, I lost my two. I think we lost your sound, Michael. Michael, can't hear you. We somehow lost your sound. You're not muted, but we lost your sound. Okay, he's going to leave and come back. Okay, um, Karen, did you want to introduce yourself while we're waiting on that since you came in after we got started? Or Louie, Louie, if you want to introduce yourself since you came in later. Hi, guys. Um, uh, sorry, I'm late. Uh, so, um, You're fine. Uh, Louie Preciado, uh, I'm on okra wrist with relapse remitting, and I was diagnosed in um, December 2021. And I'm from San Antonio, Texas. Sorry, I'm... <laughs> No, yeah, you're good. Here. You're good. Did you need time tonight? Uh, no, no, thank, no, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. I have a question, Louie. What's Louis? that? Yes. I, I'd like to know about your pictures. The pictures? Yeah. Of your grandparents. Oh, oh, um, yeah. Uh, so I'm doing a uh, like a show for them. Uh, oh, okay. Um, yeah, so um, kind of throughout their lives, I photographed them, and um, I uh, it was just a little kind of project thing I did, and it kind of got picked up by a, a gallery, and so um, they asked for me to, to share that, so um, that's going to be uh, the end of the week to October. Um, 
Okay. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. It's it's a little heavy, you know, because uh, they're not here. So, yeah. Um, but it's nice to see people uh, so interested in them, you know. Yeah. Well, congrats. Thank Will you be you. posting the photos online later after the showing? Oh yeah, and they're they're on my Instagram too. <laughs> it, it's a, it's a lot of what's on my Instagram, but uh, you yeah, have to I can send me your the... Instagram because tell me to try to find that stuff. I'm the worst, Louis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's your Instagram handle? Oh, can yeah. you uh, Louis... it in the chat? Yeah, let me see how. Yeah, Let's slide see. into our DMs and tell us your Insta. <laughs> It's just my first and last name, so. Um, oh, yeah. well, that makes it easy. Yeah. <laughs> well, my last name's hard to spell, so. I would mess it up trying to pronounce it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Preciado, yeah, but okay. I just well, let let's... people say whatever they want to say. Yeah, just do your best. <laughs> yeah, let's... yeah, yeah. Michael, are you back yet? Do we got... Nope, you are still muted. I think he said he's going to be right back. Okay, I would, yeah, hopefully he'll, uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe re yeah, his computer. Right and then, Karen, did you introduce yourself? Are you at the nearby? If not, we'll go to Carmen here. Well, she's Karen from Oakland, California. <laughs> Um, we're, we're not quite sure what kind of MS that she has. Because she was just diagnosed. Yep. We'll introduce After... her for her. <laughs> yeah. That's Karen. Yeah. Welcome, Karen. Okay, <laughs> Carmen, what did you want to talk about? I actually, I'm trying to remember if I asked you guys about this, but has did I ask about the Vila chair? Did I talk to you guys about this? That does not um, sound familiar to me. So go no. ahead. Anyone heard of the Vila Tango chair? I'm going to show you a picture. It kind of looks like an office chair. Okay. But it has a hydraulic lift, which huh. can be either just like a hydraulic. Mm -hmm. I think Carmen froze. I think we're having or, problems with the stuff uh, tonight. Electric, hydraulic. And I'm just, I don't know, after... Can you hear me? Can hear you now. Am yeah. I okay? You're okay now. Continue. Are you guys... Okay. Okay. Um, after, after my surgery, oh my goodness, you guys, I was completely flattened. I had no idea that every single symptom of my MS would be multiplied by a hundred. It was unbelievable. I was sent home less than 24 hours post-op and no help at home. My husband was the only person and he's not a caregiver. Like I have not ever needed this kind of care. It was completely overwhelming and so stressful for both of us. It was just awful, awful, awful. I'm so happy to say that I am climbing out of that hole, but it has taken a lot of dedication and energy and thank goodness I'm stubborn and I refuse to not be able to walk. So I am still kind of using a wheelchair when I'm fatigued, but I'm mainly using my rollator or uh, actually today I had a big outing. I got a brand new scooter because I haven't driven in three months either and I'm hoping to get back to driving. But anyway, um, found this scooter that's probably about $4,000. It's a few years old, but I got it for $875 and it's awesome. Nice. Yay. It's Congratulations. Awesome. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So anyway, today was my first outing with my scooter. So I went down to our local store, which is just like maybe not even 
a mile away approximately. And, uh, and then I had to go into the bank and I didn't, couldn't bring the scooter in there. I, I don't know how to handle this scooter. It's actually like really long compared to this little one that I had. So I did take it into the grocery store and of course, oh, chaos. I went into this check lane and then it was too narrow. So then I had to back up. And then of course everyone is like in line waiting. And I like, it was so chaotic and I was so embarrassed. And I just held my head high and dealt with the beeping scooter, which I've asked my husband, can you please turn that beep off? But no, of course we can't. But anyway, it was just crazy. So in this whole process, I know I'm just kind of rambling about all these different things, but I was so excited today. I actually was in the bank and I went in from where I parked my scooter outside of the, the building. Just It's just, you know, a small little sidewalk and walked in. But of course, the bank took forever. So there I'm standing with my cane, like, oh, my God, is this going to take any longer? And this was my first stop. So then, you know, you're just sapping all of your energy and like, oh, damn it. Like, I'm not going to be able to do all the things I want to do. Anyway, I did manage to survive. But that was a big outing for me to like have walked in public with just my cane is crazy. Thank goodness, though, because it's just been uh, so demoralizing to have to start from, well, I never was this bad ever. Like, it's just been a big eye opener. Of course, it's very stressful for my husband thinking, oh, my God, this is like where we're heading holy shit what are we gonna do and like he's talking about selling the house and getting into a townhouse and I'm just like honey can you just give me a few weeks like just give me a few more weeks it might take most people six weeks to recover let's just put mine at six months and then we'll see where we're at so I've tried to calm him down but anyway oh has anyone gone through that where like they've had such a big dramatic change yeah yeah because I, I went from walking to a wheelchair in a matter of months and i haven't walked since mm. and it's been a huge change and my husband has had to be more of a caregiver than he ever thought that he would have to be <laughs> so yeah so we, we've gone through quite a bit. I mean, yours sounds like it's more of a temporary, just recovering from your surgery. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, you know, that's hard when, when your significant other is not, you know, used to having to be the caregiver. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's, it's quite the change it's changed a lot of the dynamic in our household. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, so <laughs> been through it, living through it mm -hmm. and you know, it's hard for both of us because I still want to be independent and he wants to be independent himself. <laughs> so it's like, well, yeah. okay, this is where we're at. So. Thank you, Christy. Yeah, it is. It is such a big adjustment to make. Yeah. Um, earlier this year, by the way, Christy, I remember when you were up and around and it was just earlier this year, wasn't it? Uh, no, it was late last year. It was like okay. around, I would say October, November is when okay. I completely was wheelchair dependent. Okay. After she saw me <laughs> in person. <laughs> yeah, it was. Wow. Yeah, and I think... You are a stressor slash. I stressed that babe out like you wouldn't yeah. believe when she met me. <laughs> um, earlier, earlier this year, um, you know, I had COVID, Carmen. Like I had a kidney surgery and then I had COVID like honestly six days later. <sighs> And that took me from walking with a walker to not being able to get out of bed, like to clean myself. So the relationship between my wife and I, um, you know, she's now my care partner. Like we work together and 
Christy, I hope your husband could figure that out. But I know. He's stubborn like me. I mean, aren't we all stubborn? Yeah. We, I, I think we all are. Um, but yeah, Carmen, I, I hope you can get through your PT and, you know, have your husband turn that backup horn into like something cute, like a fog horn. <laughs> that would a hockey, the, the hockey horn. That mm -hmm. will go well in Canada. Do the right. hockey. You know what I'm talking about? The penalty. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm talking about. Or when they score. Change it to that sound. Yeah. When they yeah. score. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay. It doesn't sound like anybody recognizes this chair. Thank you for your other pointers. But I just was um, also curious if anyone had heard of this chair. Anyway, I'm getting a demo model in a, as soon as it arrives. And I'm looking forward to it because... One of the biggest things that I miss is being able to work in the kitchen and cook. And everyone says, well, you need a perch stool. Well, bullshit. Like a perch stool will do me fine at the sink. But then what if I need something from the cupboard and I want to put something in the fridge or I need something else from this cupboard? Like up, down, up, down, up, down off of a perch stool isn't very practical. So this chair has so many different like ways to accommodate. You can tilt the seat and like this power lift. So anyway, I'm, I'm very curious about it. And since I, I don't, I hope I don't need a power chair at this point. I'm hoping that this will be kind of my inside the house power chair and I'll still be able to kind of manage with, well, I've got my scooter now, so I'm sort of independent, although that's a bit big and bulky. It's not like I can just take it any, like take it with me, but I can use it in my neighborhood but hopefully I'll just be able to manage with like a rollator or cane as I need. So anyway, it's just something I'm looking at. It's just funny how desperation creates the need to look for things. So I've really been looking. I've also found a really cute little, not that I bought anything, but a cute little travel buggy that folds up nice and compact. That's only like 40 pounds. Like I'm just looking at all these things. And it seems so crazy to be so excited about a scooter, but I don't know. That's just where my life is, you know? <laughs> having your independence is not crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. having independence is so underrated. Yeah, yeah, like, so this is not the similar vein, but not the same as what you're talking about, Karen. Like, when I got an electric bike, that was a game changer because now I could bike again. Oh. And it just the, mm -hmm. the freedom I felt with that. And then also, Carmen, is there a way that you could put a link in the chat to the thing you're talking about so we can click on it, look at it, sure. and go, oh, this is cool. Okay, I'll work on sending that. I just want to send or show you one more picture because this is kind of cool. So we got the scooter, and my, my husband is so crafty. He brought it home and just totally personalized it for me. So that's kind of the back of it with my personalized uh, license plate. <laughs> and there it is. So it's a Land Cruiser version. So I'm calling it Carmen's Cruiser. You should Next. have a, you should put a sidecar on the side of your scooter for your husband. So you guys can go out together, but you're in control. Oh, what would I put on the side? Sidecar. I got a like, motorcycle, oh, has a sidecar. Yes. <laughs> right, right. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell him. <laughs> if he's really good, <laughs> then he can come with me. I think this has to feel. Y'all yeah. are giving my wife ideas here. She's uh, playing, you know, uh, in the background here, but uh, she's listening to this going, hmm, Tim, can we do this? <laughs> <laughs> on, uh, on my local, like, Facebook ask area uh, site, like, uh, in April or so, someone was selling their souped up scooter and they had put a frame on it to make it look like a 69 uh, Cobra, like a Corvette right. and had like fake engine noise on it. And they only wanted 15 grand for it. Only. Yeah. Only. Yeah. Mm. Only. Can I give it a test drive first? Slowly going down the road. It's kind of like when I joke about my um, stair stair lift. It's like 
you guys watch out it's gonna break the sound barrier that's how fast it goes (laughs) this shit drives me right up a wall guys everyone watch that's what it does it drives me up a wall oh (laughs) good one john that's a good one anyway thanks that was just kind of it i just wanted to share a little sure you're welcome let's uh circle back to uh well first of all karen go ahead and introduce yourself now that we have you here yeah i had trouble getting on then a friend had been trying to call me called and i said all right i'll just i'll have to watch the video or if there's something i missed i'm karen in oakland california non-relapsing progressive multiple sclerosis did you need time tonight well now i'm just curious what i missed i want carmen to see what that chair is and it's on my mind all the time it's always on my mind like well when am i going to not be able to be independent and keep keep you know it just gets harder i have to hang on to the car when I put my walker away and I live in a hilly neighborhood, so a scooter doesn't look too enticing. But so my ears perked up. I was like, okay, yeah, that's the new life. Well, what you missed is that John and I introduced you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, what did you say? (laughs) You'll have to watch the video. Tim, you want to introduce yourself while you're on here? It looks like Tim has also been growing out the facial hair like Frank. Well, you know, anytime I can be like Frank is a a good day for me. Um, I'm just saying, you know, Um, maybe one day I will be, uh, you know, uh, elected to uh, some uh, board here or something. Uh, But uh, hi, I'm Tim. Uh, I've uh, uh, I, I have the uh, little redheaded stepchild of MS, which is otherwise known as CIS, uh, clinically isolated syndrome. I am on the wonderful medication called Abagio, um, the best medication that's out there because it's got the most awesome name. And uh, hopefully one day I'll be their spokesperson. I've uh, been diagnosed since uh, March 18th of 2021. Uh, wow. And, um, yeah, uh, I don't think I'll need any time tonight. Um, you know what? Put me last, like, for five minutes. But, yeah, I'm good. Okay. Let's circle yeah. back around to Mike Pettypool, see if you got your sound back. And do you remember what you were talking about? I know it feels like it's been a long time. Um, Kira, I was introducing myself. Um, I don't think there's anybody who hasn't heard my story before. Uh, if I'm coming through, that's great. I don't need any time tonight. And I do have an appointment, appointment with mail. Uh, no, October 6th, my annual review. Awesome. Do you need any time tonight, Mike? Pardon me? Do you need any time to talk tonight? No, thank you. Okay. Amina, what did you want to talk about tonight, girl? Hi, everybody. Um, Well, when I first started with the support group with you guys, I was in a space where I wasn't at the doctor. I didn't have any doctors. I was kind of beginning the process. And now I've had, I have a pain management doctor and I have a GP now. And um, she's referred me to a neurologist that's also an MS specialist. And I remember a bunch of you guys advised that, like try to find someone that specializes in MS. And this particular neurologist does just that. And um, I haven't had my first appointment yet, but I'm just, you know, I'm on the road. Um, just try, I don't even know what type of MS I have. When I was diagnosed, the doctor didn't even tell me, um, what type I have. So I'm, um, 
excited and curious to find out what type of MS I have. Um, so yeah, I'm on the road. I'm on the journey now officially. So there it is. Mm -hmm. how's, yeah. How, how does Thank you. Say it again. When's your appointment, Amina? I don't have one with the neurologist yet, but my next GP appointment is on October 4th. And I believe that's, you know, I have my blood work. Um, she's going to discuss my my blood work that I had done today. And at that point, I'll, um, you know what, I'm not, I don't have my appointment for my neurologist yet. I'm, I'm assuming that will be happening sometime shortly. Hope so. Yeah, yeah, it, I hope so too. I'm, I'm. I was I was under the impression, which I probably have been a little scared doing this whole thing, but I'm okay. This is necessary, and I'm doing it. So. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> no. Right. Literally. Yeah. yeah. Good for yeah. you taking taking control, Amina. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. The hardest Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Is it close to home? Do you have to travel far to get to the doctors? Oh, everything that is close by. The pain management doctor is close by, and my new GP is close by, and the um the neurologist that I'm being referred to is in the city that I live in, the town that I live in, Hudson. Cool. So yeah. Yeah. It'd be great so, if they're yeah, all in the that, same building, though. It's not all the same building. That'd it's, be so um, great, though. That would be <laughs> great. Um, one of them is in you know, Port Ritchie, and the other one is in um, Spring Hill. And my neuro is going to be here in Hudson. But it's all like a 15-mile radius. So it's awesome. not really far at all. Mm -mm. No. What's Hudson? Did you move? No, I've been here. I've been in. Oh, I've been in Hudson, I, Florida. When I thought you were in Hollywood, not that I know where Hudson is, other than uh, the Hudson it, River. But right, right. <laughs> um, Hudson is about uh forty minutes um north of Tampa. Yeah, I'm, it's it's I'm, kind of in the country. Would you say? I'm curious about the pain specialist doctor. Have you been there already? And how has that been? Has it been anything I, new or? Absolutely. I've had one appointment and he, you know, he spent a good, a, time, good, a really decent amount of time talking with me and he prescribed me on, um, hold on. Uh, Baclofen, which is a muscle relaxer, which I'll only take half the time that's prescribed because when I take two per day, I'm super sleepy. I can't even function. And I'm on. Um, uh, you can also uh, break those in half, Amina. Oh, okay. Okay. If you need to break it in half. You can break it in half. Break it in try half. That. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll try that. And I'm I'm doing gabapentin for the nerve um, pain, which holy cow, I am 90% free of neuropathy. And, wow. and I know, right? <laughs> I mean, there's days when I, when it kind of like flares up a little bit, but generally I'm like 90% free of, of nerve pain. Nice. Yeah. And that is definitely a benefit. And, um, yeah, so, and I'm open to whatever I need to do. Um, now that I've seen how the med the pills have helped me, I think it's made me be a little more open to <laughs> Western medication, Western medicine. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, um, I'm, some, sometimes your doc will surprise you and say, hey, I think I want to put you on this. And you're like, why am I taking like children's Tylenol one time a day? Like, what the hell? But I'll do it. I'll do right. it. Yeah. I'm real curious. You don't have to tell us, Amina, but what strength of gabapentin did they put you on and how many times a day are you taking it? 
I'm taking gabapentin once a day in the morning, and it is a hundred milligrams. Okay. Wow, because mm -hmm. that's like wow. baby that's dose. <laughs> and yeah. you're having such a great response to that. That's amazing. Like, honestly, that is what my old dog was on, was one 100 <laughs> gabapentin a day. We used to mix it in with her food because she had bad hips. And I, I, I'll, 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 I'll just say this aloud. I mean, okay. the yes. hundred milligrams. I just want to say, oh, you're so new to this. <laughs> you know, I'm on, I'm on three, three hundred milligram doses a day. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Yeah. Now, Amina, for me, I try to do gabapentin a hundred milligrams, and I hit the floor. I was like completely out groggy like it was benadryl overdrive for me benadryl doesn't touch me but man gabapentin like woo hit the floor so they we just took me off of that said no lyrica that is too close to um uh gabapentin so it's really interesting to see how the, diff the same drug affects people different ways people differently and yeah the side effect for me was, yeah. i was just way too sleepy not not gonna work for me but for i had the exact same experience <laughs> totally yeah it was horrible it was while i was still working so that did not work at all for me mm -hmm. i i could do two 300 milligram gabapentins and that was like a sleeping pill so i wow. not that i want to not that i want to ever get on that but no. um it's kind of scaring me i'm like what i haven't had nerve pain so is that what i'm looking at in the future like wait is it does it hit the same spaces what what is it you know oh my nerve pain is always in the exact same spots um the last couple of fingers on my right hand um from just below my right knee all the way down and throughout the foot mm. mine, mine is no mine is 100 percent in my legs <laughs> period from the feet all the way to like the hips mm -hmm. but then i also have the what's the thing like when you turn your neck a bit like it's shocking pain everywhere is it called Lair Lair i was gonna say laramite so laramies yeah mm -hmm. that i had some last night and i was very uncomfortable for like an hour Ugh, i hate it when that happens it's just the worst i feel and so I and I know he's not here, but I'm going to talk about him anyways. I picked up Dan's prescription. My husband has MS for gabapentin today, and he takes it because he has really bad restless legs, and he wouldn't mm. sleep at night, and then I wouldn't sleep at night, so he takes gabapentin, and that calms them down. But I think mm. it probably helps with their pain, too. So it It's like one of those crazy drugs that everybody uses for different reasons, I guess. Right. Right, right. Because like it takes, for me, it just soothes and like cools off the fire. Because neuropathy yeah. that I experience is like, you know, pins and needles and all that, but most of it is like hot fire. <laughs> and, and, and Amina, where, like, where, where is the hot fire? Is it your feet? Um, or? My feet. And it doesn't, the fire itself doesn't go all the way up to my hips or my thighs, but the fire is like from my feet to my knees, really fiery, where it's just hot, where I'll like, sometimes I have in the past taken frozen vegetables and just lay my feet, lay my feet on it and it cools it off. Um, but that's, Pretty much, yeah. That's that's where I feel it, the actual fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm, I'm gonna be really selfish and just ask. I like my feet burn, and I think it's the I'm in a wheelchair, which you all know, but I think it's because of my shoes and just like sitting on a wheelchair. It is mm -hmm. the position, but do you? I mean, does it matter like where your feet, if they're on the floor, or if they're sitting, they just burn all the time? Right. It doesn't matter, floor, sitting. I get, I, I have, res 
gotten a little bit of relief when I when I um, elevate my legs. Okay. But not, but it's not a lot, just a little bit, like a little bit of the pain goes away, but it doesn't matter if I'm walking, sitting, laying, whatever I'm doing, the pain will be the same. Mm -hmm. Is it like that for any of you taking gabapentin for like the burning? Is it like that? Like John with your fingers? Um, it, it's it's always there. So when I go to PT or whatever, they ask me, what's your pain level today? And I say, well, it's a me one, which means that I'm, I can tolerate the pain. And then sometimes I'll go in there and say, well, I'm a me three. And they'll say, okay, so you're in a lot of pain today mm. because we know that you try to say you're not in that much pain. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah. Do you get pain, Jennifer? Because I, you know, just one of the eight or nine symptoms that over the years was all blamed on anxiety. <laughs> that I, and I, I, I often I have a tendency to be cold. So not, you know, I have the opposite thing, but I would know I had numbness. Like I definitely, the symptoms started over 20 years ago, just like a numbness in my hand. Oh, you have carpal tunnel. Well, but I don't have pain. You That's know? what they told so, me. Yeah, and it's like that doesn't make sense. And I've been mousing with my left hand for 20 years, which was kind of handy because then I could eat, you know, could be on the computer and eat. Because when I had my right hand is my dominant hand, but um, my feet, you know, now that you're saying it, I've gotten so used to it. It, it feels not fire, just warm, you know, uncomfortable. Yeah. And I've had that for a while. So no, it's not about your shoes. Cause that's what I would think. Oh, it's my shoes. And then I was also wondering, cause I'm often cold and my feet are often cold. So I thought, well, why does it, you know, shouldn't that be a good thing to feel the more? So I, I definitely feel it now, but it's not like pain. It's just yeah. my feet are feel like they're kind of on fire and Karen, I have the exact same thing. Well, I have the same thing, like I'm cold. And honestly, my feet can feel as if they're on a dead from a dead person in a fridge. Like they're just frozen. They're just mm -hmm. like no, like there's no communication to my feet sometimes. It's awful. It's just so cold. But I don't know. That yeah, I often about can it. notice often, especially if I cross my leg or I'm sitting in the same position for a long time, which I'm sure many of you understand that one. You know, why didn't you just reposition? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I just didn't. <laughs> like, and my feet would, my, my right foot, because that's where I have the paralysis, would turn blue. <sighs> yeah. But I can tell you, I, you know, I've complained about my doctors in the past, but I finally have a good, like, good thing. I actually tell my primary that I, I said, oh, I, I, I had a good visit with the neurologist. They made her feel good. Like, which is, <laughs> which is right. Like, yeah. Right. That I can even do that. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. That I can um, I think she was surprised that, and a lot has to do with this group, you know, just feeling like you've helped me understand what, what's going on with me. Cause it feels so crazy making and read about it. You don't find it when you read it. You don't find it from the doctors. You don't have, so this group has just helped me so much and um i you know i just understand there's not a whole lot for that can be offered to me but also my primary i know i've told you is she's an osteopath and she's been working on me and i leave her office and i'm taller and i'm stronger and i was using my walker in the house 24 7. but then i couldn't get a follow-up for five weeks and that was too long now I've had like two week follow ups and I sweep the floor. I mop the kitchen. I'm like, what? <laughs> I just, exactly. I, and I, I haven't been using the walker as much in the house, but I noticed today when I, I went out and um, I put my walker in the car when I was done shopping and I, I have to hang on. And so that thing about independence is, you know, wow, I don't. I don't want to lose that. And nobody does, you know, nobody wants to lose that. You want to just do your own thing. But I also got a call yesterday from Kaiser and I was like, Oh God, what's this? 
and it was my and my neurologist is an MS specialist and she her nurse called I just always praise the nurses because it's just really different to get a call from a nurse than a clerical or a medical assistant and she said you know we reordered your Ampira and Dr. Marcus looked at your record and realized well you haven't had a blood test for kidney function in a while I think it's kidney function for the Ampira so I just felt like wow you know, it's not just, oh, I got a coveted appointment that she's really paying attention to what I need and my primary. And then uh, the psychologists and social workers are on strike. I don't think they're going to settle it for over a month. So I haven't had that. I haven't had that mental health support. So I'm glad I can come here. You know what, Karen, what really surprised me in that mental health webinar that we did a couple of weeks ago when we had the the PhD, the researcher in MS, she actually said, which really surprised me, she because we talked about how it's really hard to find mental health right now, like counselors and psychologists because of COVID and everyone's just super. And she actually said that peer-to-peer -peer groups were more effective than she is. And that really threw me because I wasn't ready for her to say that. I'm like, I didn't pay you to do this webinar, but she was pretty much just, you know, you know how awesome is that though you guys yeah like that was yeah. totally i was not expecting that to come out of her mouth so i'm glad you're here and i know everyone's here because yeah. according to her this is more effective potentially than just seeing a therapist which really shocked me <laughs> i was really shocked to hear that it makes sense because you know it's a small group of people that understand what we're going through so it's really mm -hmm. helpful to find someone like i can talk about my fatigue or my cog fog you're like yeah i get it um but uh, that really surprised me when she said that because i was not <laughs> ready to hear that i didn't think that was well that was me. yeah and that was really how what i told the neurologist I, I think i hadn't talked to her in about a year and a couple of months and um but there was like no need i think she was off on maternity leave and then they were kind of backed up and the fact that she has a nurse that works with her, she said, you know, yeah, she took a little longer off for maternity and we're scheduling you're due in June, but you know, it'll be later. I was like, that's fine because I can always call her and I do call a nurse if I have a question or query, even something simple, you know, just something simple or not so simple. Like, oh, I have an MRI scheduled. Is it with contrast? How come it's not? And just somebody knowledgeable who can, I never second guess like, well, is she going to actually tell the doctor where with the other providers? It's if it's not a nurse, you just you don't know what you don't know what information gets passed on. They don't know the difference. So that's been, but yeah, I think then and then I showed then I showed the neurologist my artwork from Hannah's class. And she was very impressed. <laughs> is it this so Thursday is the next art class with the pastels? It's oil pastels, I think. I mean, I yeah. don't use those, but I the, the last this time and last time I've stuff I've never used before. I've never used watercolor pencils, and I've never used the oil pastels. So that's oh. if you guys haven't checked out Hannah's art class. It's amazing. Yeah, Check it out, do it. That's it's, gonna be that's gonna be really cool. Mhm. Mm I need to get on like a mailing list or something. No, it's through like, Ann. This is through Ann Can. But I go to her class on Mondays through the MS Foundation, and it almost feels like a joke because I never did visual art. And I don't have fine motor control at all in either hand. And um, between, I don't know what, between all of it, between the osteopathic manipulation and the art, the other day I, I wrote out a recipe with my right hand. And it's, it's like legible. It's amazing. It's amazing. So I don't know if it's creating like new neural pathways using the left hand and doing stuff that, um, yeah, a friend came over, I made cornbread and I realized, oh, I need to write out the recipe. And not only that, I did like Google lens could interpret about 80% of it. Nice. So I don't know, you know, I think there is something about Something Keep doing written. what you're doing, Karen, because it seems like yeah. you're seeing some some differences in, in progress and 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 reclaiming, getting some things back you thought you might have not have anymore. That's amazing. Yeah, I, you know, I, yet there is you know this overall decline. But I mentioned that to neuro, to the neurologist, and then also she um, she we just had trouble connecting because it was it was um, 
online. And I'm so glad I don't have to go to San Francisco to see her because it's like not a lot of going to change if she eyeballs me. You know, that just, I feel that too. I feel seen and heard. And I told her I did the 25 foot time walk and just, but she had a medical student. I think, you know, it was like a resident or something. She said, would you mind if that person joined the call? So I was like, no, that's fine. And um, I just, well, you know, we were going to end it. And I said, you know, I don't know, you know, I don't know what this art thing, but I thought you'd be interested. And she was like, I couldn't do that now, but I think it's creating some something with the neural. Karen, Karen, it really, really is. You know, um, at work, I sit through a doctor talking about MS for 45 minutes and they talk about the utility of making those neuro, neural pathways because you're doing something that you've never done before. Oh. And so because I'm losing some uh, dexterity in my right hand, I am left-handed, so that's okay. Me um, too. In, in my right hand, uh, my doctor was like, find something you can like fiddle around with, fine-tune. And my therapist said, why don't you get yourself a magic kit? So I bought a magic kit last week. <laughs> so you. <laughs> so does, I mean, it is, right? What's next? Balloon animals? Probably. But um, so far, it's been really fun. And some of the hand manip manipulation doesn't come naturally anymore. But I'm going to modify it as best as I can. I wonder if those fidget tools would be good, John. The what? Mm -hmm. Fidget tools. Like, there's all kinds of different oh. fidget tools that kids have. Yeah, I've, I've got um, a, a saddening amount of those. Oh, okay. <laughs> But it's also <laughs> saddening. <laughs> saddening. <laughs> I was a high school teacher when they came out. I had to confiscate them and why not play with them? Um, but, but I forgot where I was going. I got so excited about fidget spinners. But also, <laughs> um, I'm at a point in my life where I'm saying, you know what? I always wanted this when I was growing up. Why not, you know, get it for me now? And so what's your my, best trick then, John? You know, so far I have not really gotten too deep into it. Okay. But I can put a six-sided dice, and I can make it turn into eight dice. All little smaller ones. Cool. Mm. You might have to put on a show for us someday, hey? Yeah. yeah. Speaking... Be like, no, you're hiding stuff in your wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of art helping the brain, uh, an interesting book to read is um, a brain neuroanatomist, Jean Bolte Taylor. She had a stroke at the age of 37, and she writes a book called My Stroke of Insight, and she actually walks you through what it was like to go through a stroke and the recovery of it. And it was really fascinating because certain things she's like, I don't want to learn or remember or think about that. So I won't re um, I won't reuse this pathway and I'll use different pathways. And part of the things that she did in healing, Karen, was art. It was very interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't have. Wait, I lost you guys. I was copying. I was copying that chair and I didn't want to lose it. I wouldn't have, it's not something I really ever thought to do, like visual art. It's just, you know, I used to joke and say, oh, well, maybe when I'm older and I'm sedentary, but it's just, I have art phobia. I don't do art. I'll get up in a little bit and get my tablet of what I did yesterday because it's just amazing to me. And I keep thinking, oh, I'll, I'll work on stuff on my own, but just like the peer support group, there's just something about doing it with everyone at the same yeah. time. And having that pressure of, you know, I often, I'm slow because I'm also working with my tablet, which I'm glad that I don't have to have paints to clean up and things like that, but I don't know what I'm doing. But I um, I often like stay stay seated until I finish something, but um, it's it, there's something about staying within that time frame and being guided and no, I don't have to do it on my own. I just like doing it with everybody. Amen. And then Tim, did you want to talk about what you wanted to talk about tonight? 
before I know you always have to leave early because you have twins that need to go to bed and all that good stuff. So I want to make sure. No, I, I, I got my wife right here. She's playing Diablo three, so I, I'll be up for the rest of the night. You know. Oh, um, so you're taking over. Her. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wife her again. Wife her again. I already married her twice. Perfect. I, I want to make sure that the first time stuck. So yeah, we, we get. As a matter of fact, we're celebrating uh, nine years of wedded bliss next week. Oh, congratulations! Congratulations. Yes, uh, she is uh, applying for her sainthood. Although she is not Catholic, she will be applying for her sainthood um, after this year for sure. Oh, not yet. Not yet. Okay, she won't apply Please for it yet. <laughs> I know the Pope. I know the Pope pretty personally, so I can put it in a good word. <laughs> John, I'm going to need a lot of good words. A lot of good words. <laughs> Gubernatorial is a good word. Gubernatorial. There it is. There it is. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm going for. Um, Look, no, I... Louis did magic tricks also. He's so magic that he's here, but we can't see him. I bet he can make himself reappear. Oh, he was driving home, I think, from somewhere. So, oh, hey, hey, yeah. yay! It's magic. <laughs> Louis, now tell you, him what you're preparing for here. Or actually, have Tim go first, and we'll get back to Louis. Oh no, I was gonna say, Louis, you got to bring some for the whole class there. <laughs> I know. So y'all live too far. And can road trip. Yes, that would be fun. We currently have so much gorp right now because we buy the fixins for it at Costco and then just put it together ourselves. So I got nice. bulk gorp. <laughs> I brought enough for the class. What is it? Oh, um, so the, the name gorp comes from good old raisins and peanuts. Oh. But it's M and M's raisins. It's trail mix. Oh, you know, Gorp. I stay away I from do Costco. Have a, oh. It's a dangerous place. <laughs> it is. It can be potentially. I do. What I do have a question. It's it's slightly off topic, but I'll make it fast if that if I can get a few moments. Um, a very, very close and dear friend of mine is, um, dealing with, um, mild cognitive impairment. And what we're trying to find for her is a support group for that particular condition. There is a lot for like Alzheimer's and dementia, but she doesn't have either. She has um, mild cognitive impairment. Would any anybody here have any re resources that we can find that I can help her find a support group for that? Possibly. Uh, could one of the moderators try to like send that message to uh, Mike? You know the 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 guys in here once in a while to see if he knows of any. Like and can resources, or maybe to I mean, go from Rick? there. Rick, yeah, that's a name Rick, that sounds yeah. like him. Yeah, that's a name that sounds I, just I like him. I didn't see anything that. Yeah, I didn't see anything that Anne can has. Um, but maybe you know, if I one of us can, or if I can, just send him a quick email or something about that. But it seems to be kind of difficult to find. A group for that particular condition because i think it um, would need to be amina as a nurse i would think like well what's the source of it you know what's the source of the minor cognitive and i actually did a friend visit last week and she's 40 and she's saying that she's having problems with her memory and she's, she's worried about it and um you know should she get tested and i said well you should document what it is you're talking about because she's not a complainer mm -hmm. you know She's not like me, you know, she does, she's not at all a complainer. And I go, if you're complaining, then I believe you. But I think it really is important to find out what, what is the source of that. Like, she's in the process now of finding that out with um. She has a really um, a big test that she has to do in a few days. And um, 
she's in the process now and trying to figure out what caused it. But we're not, you know, she's not sure yet. Because even that she has that word, you know, I would, I wouldn't have used that word until the neuropsychologist was going to test me. I talked to him a couple of times and he came up with the test and then it was time for the test. And he goes, you know, this is a consent form. And I just need to tell you that um, when I test you, if I find MCI, mild cognitive impairment, and I'm sure I will, I'll have to let the DMV know. So do you want to do the test? It's like, uh, maybe I don't. Mm -hmm. Or the fact that she's someone is even saying it. Yeah, she has um, this like four hour long test with her neuropsychologist, I think coming up in like a week or so, right? And um, so hopefully she'll be able to get more answers then. Um, she had tests done. They had to do something with the spine um, to check um, for Alzheimer's or dementia. They checked the spinal fluid and they were able to tell that it wasn't either of those um, conditions, but she's had like her cognitive ability has decreased some. Um, Amina, uh, I had to take one of those tests uh, last January and um, it told me a lot about myself that I knew and didn't okay. know to like a scary, scary level of precision um, okay so i i'm i feel i don't want to say i'm sure but i'm i'm very very hopeful that your your loved one will get that exact same test and kind of narrow everything right right down right okay okay that's good to know thank you yeah honestly okay. it's, a lo it's a lot of the same tests that I've taken at neurologists, like, uh, hey, there's nine pegs in this board. Pick it out with one hand. I'll put it back in with the same hand. Now rearrange them going from, you know, rainbow color, just things like that. And even the easy things like that, um, easy things, even things that mm -hmm. I found easy can be very telling. Yeah. Mm, and, okay. Uh, Christy, I don't know the name of the test. It's just the one that my my doctor neuropsychologist did there's different tests test. like a normal like cognitive test yeah 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 okay because there's a lot of different tests i mean i learned that from the neuropsychologist because i talked to him three times like two times for an hour and it was it was was it last year it probably was but it was during covid and he said that there's lots of different tests that we can do but since it's covid and i can't do them in person I have to come up with tests based on what you're telling me about the symptoms that you have. And he said, most people don't, don't know. I mean, usually when people brag, I don't believe him, but I do believe him. He said, I'm, I'm really good at figuring out which tests that would be specific to what you're sharing with me. So it wasn't generic. You know, it was, it was that. And my therapist at Kaiser said, oh, I heard good things about him. But, um, you know, I, I know because I have, I definitely have, I don't even think it's that mild anymore, but I definitely have cognitive impairment and I'm less concerned about it because I understand thanks to this group and everyone else that it's just, it's, it's what it is like an MS, you tend to not go have Alzheimer's. It could happen, but that's not the thing. But knowing that I have cognitive impairment, just like what kind of things can I do to prevent mistakes like showing up at the pool and leaving a bag at home with my bait suit and my underwear <laughs> or then going home the following week and going hmm where's my bathing suit where's all my stuff but um i mean i'm noticing like see-through bags work for me having things like more order you know not having a lot of scattered stuff that there's just different things so you know even if there's no because this group isn't specific for that, but just knowing that it is, that, that okay, mm -hmm. this is real. I really can't remember. Most people don't see it. Everybody thinks I'm fine. I'm just fine. What was mm. I just talking about? Wait, what was mm -hmm. I just talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm.
Downsizing my stuff and keeping the clutter to a minimum has helped me tremendously. Mm. It's just like the amount of clothes I have, like everything, it just helps so much because I can't keep track of what I own, what I have, what I don't have, where I put stuff. And it's just overwhelming if you have to go through a pile of stuff to find something or check you know, three or four or five different places, you know, keep it simple, keep everything clean, like, you know, as limited amount of stuff as possible. Get the hardest part is finding a place for everything you own, like find a place, not just having a little like just sail and keep moving. And it's just like, right. and I don't even bring Chotsky's home now. Like if you do, like I'm doing a bike ride on Saturday and like, hey, you want? No, no, let's just, let's just get to just travel in my house. I don't need that. <laughs> so. That it, me out it, it, it blew my mind the opaqueness because I had to get a new pillbox just because the one I had was one one of the days didn't work so then everything would fall out and I'm just cheap so I bought one that was a little mildly transparent I don't like change you know I never used to be like that bad but it just if there's a little mild change it's it's too much to reorganize in the brain so I got this I got the cheapest one and it's pretty green like my other one. And I was like, oh, I hope this doesn't mess me up. And I realized I don't forget to take my meds now because it's got, it's not opaque. It's transparent. And I see it. I, I mean, I didn't even know that when I looked at the other, that it's opaque. I mean, of course I know it's a pill box. I know what's on the other side of the pill box, but it's now that it's see-through. Cause I'll put stuff in my swim bag and then I go, I know I put this in there. Where is it? Where is it? And it's like, Oh, it's in an opaque bag. It's in a white opaque bag. It's truly One thing I, I do care. And if I have like a thing that's um, like, like you're going to the, the, to the pool, have a checklist, have like a permanent checklist that you could go through. Or I just keep my bag packed all the time and I always keep everything. Like I have an extra set of deodorant. Back in the day when I had long hair, my extra hair, like everything was already in the bag. So all I had to do was go in the bag, put on my swimsuit and boom, I was out the door. I had everything. And I was really good about keeping everything in the bag together. So it went downstairs in the basement where I was hanging things up to dry. Everything stayed nearby. And then I packed the bag once everything drove. But I had to do it that way or else I'd be like, Oh, I forgot my lock at home. Oh, you, I forgot, you, you know, I think towel. you also have to learn how to live, learn how to live like a criminal. Have two of everything, one at home, one in your car. And then the other thing I do is I have, not that I love bright stuff, I just have to see it. So like my cell phone is a bright, not because I love pink, but it's because I can see it. My portable speaker, bright red, so I can find it. So nothing of mine is black if it doesn't have to be because... I can't find it. It just disappears if it's black. Make it bright, stunning. It's probably another reason why I have neon shirts right now that I'm wearing. Just yeah. Oh, you just, can't even see how bright it is. Yeah. being so unorganized. No. Well, yeah, but see, the thing is, when like for me, it's getting increased. It's increasing the cognitive stuff. And, um, you know, just like simple things, people go, hey, what's the name of such and such? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't remember. But, and just, and then just taking in stride, like with the pool, like I went, I, I'm glad I went early that day and I had new goggles and I get there and I was like, I don't have that stuff. And it was on my walker that I walked from the car, that I walked from the house to the car. But then the following week, I left there and I was like, huh, I don't have my little towel. When did what happen? And I sent someone back in to look and she didn't find it. And I get to the car and I'm like, my suit's not here. What? You know, oh, so-and-so must have taken my suit. I mean, how could it just not come home with me? So I didn't have her number, but I had somebody else's. And she called the next day. She goes, I don't have your suit. She goes, but I did see the little towel. And that's really strange. So they go, oh, is it blue with a stripe? I called the pool and they, yeah, they have my thing. So then I was getting out of the car that Monday knowing that they have my suit. And I was thinking, I, don't, I can't find my bathing cap. And so when I get there, she's like, I, I got the towel. I got the bathing suit, the bathing cap. And she goes, hey, did you leave some uh, your shampoo and conditioner too? I said, oh, thank you. And I even went back to look. But what I didn't look in was the shower. Like there was a shower stall. And I, I remembered when I was talking to this woman that like, oh, I took everything off and I put everything in the soap thing. I had never done that before. So it's just, 
also just being kind to myself and going, wow, that's a new one rather than freaking out, you know, just create a checklist and, and look at the checklist before you leave the locker room, make sure everything is in your bag. Well, they were always, what happened that particular day, they were yelling at us to get out. Like there was some new lifeguards. Mm. I talked to the manager. I said, look, you know, equity and inclusion, he, and he's Chinese American. I said, you know, equity and inclusion, it's not just about don't yell at the Asian lady because she doesn't speak English. You know, like we were three disabled <laughs> people. We just couldn't move quickly. We can't. And, it, and you know, and then because of that, it's, oh my God, where's my stuff? And the anxiety kicks in with the stress of time. Yeah, nothing is worse than being rushed. I hate being late. When I die, my headstone is going to say, sorry, I'm late. Because it always takes me so much longer to get ready to get, I'm always late. When I meet you all, I'll be late. Kim, I was on time when we met, but that, that was, it was with other people didn't have a choice, but just, I think that there's such stress. And when you're going someplace that you're looking forward to, and then you get stressed because you're going to be late. That can, you know, like Karen, you were talking, the lifeguard yelling at you. It's like, okay, I'm stressed out because I'm exercising. I don't need you adding to that. Well, my, my husband says, always says, you're going to be late to your own funeral. <laughs> like, I won't be late because you'll be in charge and I'll be dead. <laughs> I'll, I'll just agree that I will be late for my own funeral only because I want to see who shows up. Yeah. I have, with my cognitive issues, I have a notorious time screwing up the time for an appointment especially if it's a different time zone i always mess it up but it's not uncommon for me to show up an hour late like the second testing we had for the seminar the webinar we did i thought it was an hour later so i didn't show up i felt bad but it was okay but it was just all that like i never did that before and now it's like i'll look at the i'll look at my uh phone and i'm like okay my appointment's at you know 12 we're good and then sometime between then and that and the appointment my brain will say nope it's one o'clock kim you're good it's one o'clock <laughs> that happens to me all the time and it is freaking embarrassing so i try to put everything in the um in my but you know your, your your phone's only as good as you entering it incorrectly correctly the first time <laughs> put and it in the wrong it's not very helpful and then when the time turn on the like they change yeah but then yeah. time zones change, like, because I do time zones things, but I keep everything now in my Google Calendar and even my notes because I have a note program, but then I got to remember where did I put them? Where did I put those notes? What did I call them? And yeah. everything takes me longer than I think. So I do now try to get places early. And so um, I try to play. Yeah, Friday night I went out to services. I stayed out till 10. That's the first time since COVID. I went to Friday night services and I was going to leave early so I could buy gas. And then I realized, you know, I think you can manage without buying the gas. So then I got there at like, you know, 20 minutes early. And I said, oh, I think I'll just sit in my car and, you know, it just feels so good to get there early. But the only way I ever get there early is if I fool myself and think I'm going to get there earlier than what I. Despite how early I like to show up early too, because I hate being late. But if I think the time is an hour later than what it is, it doesn't matter how early I'm showing up. I'm still late. <laughs> Cause I don't show up an hour early. That's a little bit, unless it's like airport, then it's like two hours early. I know I, had, um, I, I was always late and then I had a job and I, I was just like, Oh my God, I can't be late. So I took a taxi, which like a long time ago. I mean, even now I don't, but I can't believe I splurged on a taxi and I got there and it was daylight savings time and they go, you're late. And I was like, I even took a taxi. That's not fair. <laughs> I, uh, I, I can't be bothered to make a calendar, either digital or handwritten for my entire life. Like not even putting what time my classes are. Like, nope. Don't care. I'll remember it. So I do okay remembering stuff now. But yeah, 
I need to start writing stuff down. That'll change, John. Promise. Yes, that'll change. Another thing but that I've done is... If you're having trouble with dexterity, I'm so glad I found out about the Google Calendar. And I have all kind of colors in it, so that helps trigger... And I'm starting to keep lists and like keep notes. So like uh, things I buy on Costco, like you can cross it off, but it still stays on the list. So then you go to Costco again, you can kind of like look through and scroll like, do I need any of this stuff versus like trying to come uh, off fresh off my head? I do that kind of stuff all the time now, which does help me somewhat. Luckily, Melissa is a master of calendars. And oh, so you don't have to do it because she's doing it for you and she's keeping you in check. No, I, I said luckily. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Not like, thank God she is. Well, but yeah. I have I got... everything. I have everything. And then I have colors and like when I bought gas and how much I paid for gas and how, you know, because I just can't remember everything. And this isn't even all the colors that I used because this was a monthly thing, but open and honestly that doesn't sway me a bit that sounds like a it wouldn't a, sway me either i'm not i have art yeah. phobia but no i'm just I saying don't... like yeah it's, it's like it... i have no i have no choice it's my necessity you know i don't have anybody to remind me i don't have anything yeah. to yeah so my times were off so bad when i was doing the uh curbside uh pickup for the co-op I started having to tell my husband what time I needed to go because I kept screwing up so bad. But then I was telling him the wrong time because I already converted the time in my brain. So I had to forward him the original email of the time I was set up to him because I was screwing up so bad. So hmm. I would get there on the right time because I would keep changing it in my brain. That got really embarrassing. Like I keep showing up at the wrong time. <laughs> Like you're really early, or you're really late, or you're really early. I'm like, I'm sorry. You always right. show up for this. Well, I'm I not have, being. I, I'm. I'm not being. You know, like I want to cut the line or something. I just screwed up. So. But you always come to this, and I. I do 24 hour clock. I mean, I've been doing that since I lived in Israel, like 40 something years ago. So it's just easier because I don't have to worry about AM and PM. It's like I know what 1400 means. But now, because of the cognitive and everything is slow, that if somebody wants to make an appointment on the 14th, I could do it on Wednesday, the 14th at 2 o'clock, or Monday, the 12th at 1 o'clock. And I don't even realize I'm like, 1 means 13. Wait, it's the 4th. Wait, it's 12. Did you say the 4th, the 12th, the 4th? It's... So, John, you're just not there yet. You just have to, you know, get to that point where you're going, okay, I really can't function anymore with numbers. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I do take, like, a printoff of appointments, so I have, like, a stack of appointments. But I do have a calendar, like, a, there's an app that tracks my uh, appointments for me, but oh. it was wrong today. <laughs> And it was going to be wrong again Thursday. And so now the, the, the secretary even said, like, yeah, don't don't trust that. Like, what's on the papers? What time he needs to be here? Like, oh, OK. Got it. Speaking of appointments, our next MS group meets in two weeks, on September 27th. I will be either at. Rochester or coming back from Rochester and I'll be coming off my steroid from my ocarvis infusion yesterday so I may not be here or I probably will not be running it so someone else will get to run the group in two weeks because I will be probably exhausted so we'll get get some new to different to uh to moderate is there anything but else since, anyone wants but, to since, but Kim since you're talking about run it's not going to run What's not get a run? Oh, it'll I mean, run. This is not a running group. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dogging, slow walk, John, something. Yeah. Is there anything anyone else want to discuss before I turn off the recording? Uh, did I tell you guys about my trip to Grand Rapids for the Van Gogh exhibit? Mm -hmm. They didn't have any handicap accessible rooms open. 
because the National Wheelchair Convention was at that hotel. Now, this is the, the Amway Grand in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It's a big, fancy kind of a place. It's been around since the 20s. And so there were no chair, no like rooms left. And then we got into our room and there was no way that I could get to the toilet safely. So if I had to go number two, we had to take the elevator from the 15th floor down to the, the lobby and get me to a bathroom. So that was a fun adventure to really look at where you're going to stay. But you figured it out. Yeah. Got oh, it. There's got also a, there's a quilting convention there as well. But it was great. Power chairs pulling along, manual chairs, races, jousting. Man, it was our sense of humor on a big convention scale. Cool. Sounds fun. Yeah. Oh, what do you have, Molly? Oh, I was wondering. <clears throat> so I got my MRIs a, wh a while back. They said that there weren't active lesions or new ones, but I still feel like new, like sometimes my, uh, I get tremors a little bit, and uh, that never happened. <laughs> and it just comes and goes. So I don't know if y'all have experienced that where, I remember for a while I was getting migraines and then, you know, fatigue, which that's always, but, you know, things seem to, symptoms come and go that I didn't have before. So I don't know if y'all ran through that. Because it is, not... it's hard to recreate it, but sometimes it just, you know, it's a certain position. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't recreate it now. I won't do it. But um, I don't know. Sometimes my hand does that. Mm -hmm. The best like way I had it. Go ahead. I was just going to say, is it like the position where you have your hand? Okay. Yeah. It's, it's always like for some reason reaching to my face would sometimes do it or... Um, taking a drink or something. It's always this one spot for some reason. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I've been told, Louie, is that um, when it comes to your MRIs, sometimes you have lesions and no symptoms, new symptoms. Other times you have new symptoms but no lesions. So you can't correlate always your symptoms with your lesion load on your MRIs, if that makes sense. So I know yeah, it's I don't you, like lesions. you feel like all these changes, like why am I not lighting up like a Christmas tree? I should be showing like all these lesions. I'm like, no, nothing's changed. You're like, really? Because what I'm experiencing <laughs> has completely changed. And you feel kind of, you know, if it's kind of it, it's it's uh, kind of feel, or out of sorts, like it should show on the MRI that I'm having. But it doesn't. But, you know, the MRI is only so. um so precise you only can see so 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 deeply so you might have stuff going on and the mri is not strong enough to pick it up so i don't have new lesions and i have new symptoms all the time hmm. i hope i don't have that nerve pain but at least oh, yeah, the I've nerve heard pain of... is coming on my my feet that my my, knee, my feet have gotten a lot worse and like thankfully it gets better as the day goes on but when i wake up it feels like i injured my feet in the morning it feels like if i didn't have ms i would have thought oh my god i've injured my foot i need to see a doctor but since i have ms i'm like no it's just nerve stuff that's all it is and it definitely shows because i got the big old shot of salumedrol yesterday in my iv and this morning did i have problems with my feet no i was doing great because i have that massive steroid dose so oh great but as it wears off it's gonna come back so how about i get a cramp in my right leg which is the side where there's paralysis does anybody in the calf does anybody else experience that i've had with so many muscle spasms Sorry. No, you're great. I just been having problems in the morning where I wake up and it feels like I've been 
clenching my feet in my calves all night. So they just, you know, but I think that's, um, I don't think it's muscle related. I think it's more the nerve issues. Um, well, I've had spasms pretty much my lower legs, my lower part of my right leg. And my grandma asked me the other day, she's like, well, I get Charlie horses. And I'm like, grandma, Charlie horses and spasms are two different things. She's like, yeah, but I can't function when I get a Charlie horse. And I was on the phone with her and I was getting a spasm. She's like, well, you know what helps me? And I was like, what's that grandma? She's like, punch the area <laughs> to get it to release. I'm like, oh, grandma, that's not going to work. She's like, but punch it. And I'm like, grandma, it hurts. <laughs> I can't punch my foot. That's different. Anymore. Yeah, that's different. Because yeah. Char Charlie horse, I guess is what I get this cramp. Because my, my, my primary who's an osteopath, she worked on, I told her my, I get cramp. And when she works on it, and she said, and do it before you go swimming. So I've been pushing on it. But that's, that's a muscular. It's not nerve pain. Nerve right. Pain. But yeah, I, she goes, well, if yours isn't a Charlie horse, what does it feel like when you get a spasm? I go, what it feels like is like an 18 wheeler has driven over my foot and I can't move it. And it's just there. She's like, oh, that sounds awful. I was like, yes, it is awful. It feel it literally feels like that. And she's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. Did you take ma uh, calcium magnesium? <laughs> like, Grandma, stop. You don't know. Just yeah. stop. Just stop. Christy, have you been getting any more pain relief? I know you were talking about doing, like, a test drive on, like, the baclofen pump. But have you been changing any medications or gotten some relief? Because I know it was really, really bad there for a while. Have you gotten? Well, with the... With the, uh, no, I haven't changed much medication. The only thing I got was it's a, a film. It's a, uh, a pain reliever, uh, pain, whatever film is Belbuca. And it's just like a little film that I, it's administered buckly. So on your che cheek, it dissolves, you put it on your cheek and it dissolves. I'm not noticing that helps at all. So I don't know. Belbuca. Belbuca. B E L B U C A. Um and I have an oh, appointment. Okay. I have an appointment on the twentieth with the pain management. Um and then Basically, what's going on with the baclofen pump is that I have to go in for a um, trial. So basically, it was explained to me just the other day because I thought it was like a temporary pump that they were going to put in for like a week. No. So basically, it's like an epidural and they push the, uh, the baclofen in through the epidural and then i'm observed for like three to four hours to see how it does and if everything works out better then that's when they would schedule to have the pump implanted so i don't i the way that it's been with my medications i'm not really feeling very confident that this is going to help with my spasms and spasticity. So I don't know. It's just something I've got to try. And it's, you know, and now I've got spasticity in my left leg, which, you know, makes it even harder. <laughs> like just everything is just not going well right now. So, so that Belbuca, I just looked it up. I mean, there's a lot of strengths to it. I, it kind of, I, I got that. I realized the buka is inside the cheek. In a way, it makes sense because it's absorbed. It's right. just absorbed in a in an interesting way. But it, it's as low as 75 to 900 micrograms. So maybe it's not enough. Well, I'm, with, I'm on the 75. That's the um, lowest. Yeah, I know. And uh, 
So I, I'll discuss it with them. I think the 20th is what, Tuesday? I think. Um, but I know I have an appointment on Tuesday, the 20th. Yeah, them. it's a week from today. Yeah. So I'll discuss so. that with them. Um, Christy, I know they you're new to them. this group. Huh? Sorry. Sorry, Christy, I, I know I'm new to this group and maybe don't know your history, but I'm just wondering, have, do you, have you done much with like massage or like for, like a percussion gun or anything for your spasticity? The reason I ask is because I deal with a lot of spasticity and luckily I have a very good benefit program. I go to massage twice a week, almost all the time. And that's the only thing that keeps me moving. But I've also got like two different percussion guns and then I even got a thumper, which is more like an official chiropractor kind of one. And it's life changing for my legs. Like I can actually walk after I use that. Well, I would entertain that. However, um, because of how tight my spasticity is, um, even when I go to PT or to uh, PT and OT, when they're working with that, it uh, triggers spasms. Uh, mm -hmm. And the spasms are very painful. Uh, so, oh. yeah, so it, it's, yeah. I can't win. I just, yeah. I just can't win. So it's just, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I've, I've thought about that before because we have a, is it a percussion massager or whatever? Mm hmm percussion gun we have or one of, whatever yeah we have one of those but like i i'm not even near the area and i've tried it with that and mm -hmm. it just the spasms just trigger like crazy uh, brutal. It's, it's horrible mm -hmm. so yeah. i'm really hoping that you know baclofen because i do take baclofen right now but the way i'm I'm described or how I'm told having the baclofen directly um, administered mm -hmm. into like my spine area. Um, it doesn't because when you take it orally, you don't get the full benefit because your body as it um, metabolizes or whatever, you yeah. lose part of the benefit. So I'm really hoping that this, like, directly to the source actually works. Mm -hmm. And doesn't leave you with the tiredness of the baclofen. Right. It, you don't have the side effects uh, when you have it administered directly. Well, fingers of going crossed for you. Absolutely. I wouldn't but give yes. up on that cheek thing because you really... You know, you've been on pain meds, so if you got the very lowest dose, which is, you know, it does make sense. They start with that, but I think that would just, I don't know, Kim knows better than me, why it would absorb well in the cheek. Yeah, it's just a different route. I mean, they do the I, same thing with Actique, which is fentanyl, buccal, um, lollipops. Like, like, so. Do they mean like in the cheek? Yeah, yeah, you don't, you just, yeah, it absorbs to your cheek. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when, yeah. at first yeah, I, I thought you meant over there, and then, but I got the buccal part was like, I knew this inside yeah, of the cheek. Sublingual is like under your tongue, buccals in your cheek, and then also, overall you obviously swallow it. So yeah, there's lots of different routes. It's, it's funness all around. Yeah, if, let me see. I, and I get it's a pain pill, but I also... Well, I think that or drug is also a nasal spray that they can use too. I mean, when are you supposed to get reevaluated from using those? Have you talked to them going, yo, it's not effective. I'm not noticing a difference. Um, I have not. Um, but they, uh, like I said, I'll, I'll address it again on Tuesday when I go in. So let me see if, if I can show you, cause it's about that time for, a, um, so this is the film or the old package it comes in, um, and it's really not that big. Let me see. I hate these packages. So, Try to make them childproof. <laughs> yeah. 
So if you can see, it's like literally, it's tiny. And you just put it on the inside of your cheek and let it dissolve. So nice. Yeah. So it's, I don't know. I think, I find there's, still I think there's still potential for you. You know, if you yeah. have the most mild dose, it's like, well. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> Like I said, I, I'll just have to address it when I go to my appointment. It's really hard to get a hold of them. Like I have an email for um, his medical assistant, but she's not very responsive. So, but um, I just spoke with somebody yesterday. No, Monday. Um, Cause basically you have to go through a psych evaluation before they think about implanting something into your body. Um, so I had my psyche eval on Monday and then I heard from a nurse that's not with my pain management doctor. She's with the, the back or the baclofen pump side. Um, so I heard from her, she's like, well, my ears must've been ringing to give you a call. And I'm like, I guess so. Cause she was calling to just, follow up on the psych evaluation um, and if I'd done it yet. So I actually did it that day. So, you know, they, she said that it'd take a couple days for Dr. Gasquire to, to get Gasquire? that report. Yeah. To get that report. He's my pain management doctor. Um, and so hopefully they don't think that I'm, too psychotic to get something implanted because if they do i'm like well, well then i'm i'm screwed <laughs> if they if they feel like i'm not mentally like prepared to have something implanted so and i imagine they want to know if you're like a drug seeker you know with this i imagine that's part of the test you might, I know you still have pain, Christy, but you're still, there's been a big change from when you first came into the group. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's something that I was just telling Steve the other day, I said, if this is something I have to deal with for the rest of my life, uh, it's, it's something that I, I don't know if I can handle it for the rest of my life. And I'm really hoping, I'm crossing my fingers, praying and hoping that this is the answer to what I've been going through. So, hmm. so do that's I all I can do. Yeah. So. Okay. I have a date with the tens machine, everyone. So I'm gonna yeah, say I'm, I'm hearing yeah. yeah. Have a good couple of weeks, everyone. And we'll be back in yeah, two see weeks. You guys in two weeks. I'll be looking yes. for a Take care. for a magic trick. Yeah. <laughs> good to see everybody. Good luck with all tests yeah. and everything that you have to do in the next couple of weeks, everyone. You as well. It's good seeing everybody. Did you turn the recording off? Did you return turn the recording off, Kim? No. No. Let me turn it off. Wait for 